Hi everyone, today it's that time again to talk battery degradation on the Hyundai Ioniq. Six months ago, I invited all of you with an Ioniq 28 to submit readings on your car after driving from 100% of battery capacity to a low percentage. If you record efficiency and distance driven, then you get an estimate of usable battery capacity and therefore a view of real life battery degradation. Of course, that method is valid for any car, not just the Ionic. The good news is that since the last video, we now have more than 50 cars participating from about 15 different countries, and that's over 90 different submissions. So before we start, a big thank you to anyone participating so far and contributing to a good bit of knowledge sharing. And if you find this content useful and would like to see more, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as ever. Well, let's get to it then. As we said, 93 responses. Let's have a look at what we're getting. Well, first of all, the cars are either from 2018 2017 or 2019, no surprises there. This is when the car was produced and therefore a majority coming from 2018. If you look at the countries where these are in use, quite a bit of variety, a lot in Europe, obviously UK, Germany, the Netherlands, and then a few in Canada, USA, New Zealand, France, and so on and so forth. Funnily enough, not so much in Norway that has so many EVs, as well as in France, but quite a good distribution there. Because most of the countries are using kilometers, this is what we're getting. And of course, we are converting everything to the same units, the same currency. Now, since the last video, what we've done is we've added one more question around how much rapid charging would you say the car has done in the lifetime? Because it's supposed to be one of the key things that matters for the car. But you can see that not people know exactly how much they've done. A lot uh, will think that they're not using that much DC charging. But I would say we're not going to be able to do any analysis on that. This is a very small sample in terms of those that have more DC charging than others. So that would be anecdotal at best. In terms of when the tests were submitted, well, it started in February. We are now uh, in July and you can see that the bulk was anywhere between March and May. This is where you get those mild temperatures in most of the countries where the tests have been performed. In terms of the distance driven, well, it varies quite a bit. So what have we got here? Well, most of the drivers have done something like 150 to 180 kilometers, which is a good stretch to use a good chunk of the capacity of the battery. Again, let's remember it is a small battery on this particular EV, and therefore we're going to get a lot of that battery used. This means that many of the submissions will have a remaining battery capacity at the end of the test, somewhere between 10 and 30%, which is absolutely fine because we then correct for the non-linearity of the curve on this particular car. Not particularly relevant for this test, which is more about capacity and degradation, but just to give you a sense, most of the cars will have driven between 120 watt hours and 130 watt hours per kilometer, again pointing to good efficiency of this car in various conditions. If we look at the distribution of the distances that those cars have driven to date throughout their lifetime, you can see that quite a few now have more than 100,000 kilometers. That's more than 20 of them. And importantly, this time we've got five cars that have more than 200,000 kilometers with one at more than 300,000 kilometers. So that gives you a sense of the longevity of the car because we're going to have a good look at what happens when we get into those quite large distances on the odometer. 
For temperatures recorded outside the car during the test, it hasn't varied massively. And one thing I'm still interested in is how much temperature of the battery influences how much energy can be delivered. But I don't think we're going to see very much from that. And what matters more is whether the car has been charged on a rapid charger before. So unfortunately, not too much to read into that this time again. Now we get to the first proper results. If you draw all those outcomes of the tests driven on a map of how much of the battery has been used versus how much of the battery in kilowatt hours has been dispensed, you can see that there is very strong correlation and the curve drawn here is very much the same as the one I have as a reference for my car throughout many recordings of a time. So what this is saying is that our adjustment for the non-linearity of the battery is going to be pretty much correct. And therefore we've got a test that is working well. This curve removes a couple of outliers, especially those that are claiming more than the original battery capacity and therefore we're excluded. How much have we got for those different cars? Well, anywhere between 21 and 26 kilowatt hours. For reference, I consider that a car even new would have delivered 26.5 kilowatt hours. And that's simply a function again of the equation. How much distance can you drive for a given efficiency? And if you extract 26.5, that's already very good given some of the losses at the time of discharging, at the time of regening and so on and so forth. So, that's the distribution we've got here. You can see that there is indeed a sense that the more kilometers those cars have driven over their lifetime, the more it tends to be a little bit lower when it comes to the remaining usable capacity. However, it's not that strong correlation. And uh, more importantly, there seems to be a bit of a bulk over here um, especially up to 200,000 kilometers, which is quite a stretch for a number of cars already. Now, if you look at the same chart, but expressed as a function of what was truly available at the start, the 100%, you could argue that for every 10,000 kilometers, the battery capacity will be reduced by about 0.28%. So a small number, and very importantly, a number that is almost exactly the same as the one we were looking at on the smaller sample of just 20 cars last time. The other thing to consider is that the vast majority of the cars will be somewhere between 85% and 95%, almost irrespective of the distance driven on the odometer. So a much simpler way to look at this is to say, well, if I'm buying one of those cars, it is very, very likely, even if I can't have a look at it, that its battery is going to be somewhere between 85 to 95 percent usable which is important, of course, especially if you're looking at a used car, which is now quite affordable. It's gone down massively and therefore gives you a car that still has very good mileage. And that is the distribution you're looking at across those various cars. So you're going with the majority will have anywhere between 88% and 96%. Now, anything above that would be quite unusual if it has driven quite a, a bit, which you would expect, uh, given those cars are typically five, six, seven years old. But very importantly, a good chunk of the cars will be sitting on that 90 to 92 percent drivable battery capacity, which is very good. Now, we do have some outliers, including one car that's close to the 75 percent mark, which is pretty bad. And this is just the one measurement. And I would like to have more than one reading about this car. But let's now focus on those cars that have more than 200,000 kilometers. So what do we see there? Well, first of all, we've got two cars that have given us more than one measurement, which gives us confidence in the quality of the result. So the one from Canada has 24 kilowatt hours usable steel, which is fantastic at 91% on a 204,000 kilometer car. 
The one from Germany, just the one reading, but it has achieved 23.7, which again is very good. The one from France is quite a bit below, but the great news is we have huge amounts of data about this car. It's a car that went from France to Morocco. If you want to hear more about that one, stay tuned, because we're going to do a deep dive on that one. Loads of interesting stuff there. And then from Netherlands, we've got a car that has given us 10 measurements. And thank you very much for that. That's fantastic. But you can see not that much spread between the mean and the max, which again gives loads of confidence about the quality of the assessment on how much degradation there is on that car. And it comes at 87%, which again is not bad at all for a car with 207,000 kilometers. Finally, the car from Sweden, which is the one with more than 300,000 kilometers at 23.41. Again, very good. And the thing that you can see here is that if you remove this one car, which is again an outlier within that very small sample of the cars with more than 200,000 kilometers, well, you get the fact that they are just as good as the rest of the lot, those cars that had 50 to 100,000 kilometers. So, Again, distance may not be the only thing to consider when looking at how good the battery is. And more importantly, has it been too much in too much heat? Has it been in too much cold? So all of that, I think, gives us loads of confidence in the quality of this car and its battery in particular and how it's able to sustain its quality over the years. I think that's going to be it for today. I hope you found that useful. Feel free to keep using the spreadsheet that tells you how you compare to the benchmark. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.